Good Karma Tarot. This is Rhonda, and I'll be showing you all 78 cards so you can get a feel for whether this deck is for you. And if you like it, you'll find a link to purchase it in the description box. I'll also be giving you an overview of the guidebook and reading a sample card interpretation, so stick around to the end because who knows, maybe there's a message you're meant to hear today. Let's get started. This deck was created by Carrie Ward, who was the first tarot columnist for Cosmopolitan Magazine with illustrations by artist Amy Blackwell. The 78 cards come in this sturdy, oversized box. It's much bigger than the standard tarot box. And the guidebook, which is also oversized, is fits atop the plastic insert, which has two compartments for the cards. Just want to show the plastic insert, two separate compartments for the cards. The cards are a nice thick weight and they're glossy on both sides. And the guidebook is very nice. I would say it's a deluxe guidebook, which is in full color. So let's go ahead and have a look at the cards. starting with the Major Arcana. And by the way, this deck is, is marketed towards beginners. And some of, a lot of these cards are very strongly or somewhat, some of them other are loosely based on the standard Rider Waite Tarot. If you're just learning the tarot, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with that standard deck, but this is also a great deck to use for as a beginner. Some beginner's decks have the names of the card or the, have a description along with the name of the card, but I think this deck is geared towards beginners mostly because of the, the approach they take in the guidebook, not necessarily because of the cards, but everyone is different, everyone learns differently, so just take a look and see if these cards and the guidebook appeal to you. So we have The Fool, The Magician, High Priestess, Empress, the Emperor, Hierophant, the Lovers, Chariot, Strength, Hermit, the Wheel of Fortune, the Devil, Justice, the Hanged Woman, which is typically the Hanged Man in the traditional tarot, Death, Temperance, The Tower, The Star, The Moon, The Sun, The World, Judgment, and now those were, that was the last major arcana card. Now we're moving into the first suit, which is swords, the ace of swords, two of swords, three, four. And I'm just gonna show the cards rather than calling them out at this point.
We're in the court cards. We have the Knight of Swords, Queen of Swords, King of Swords, and now we're moving into the Cups suit, Ace of Cups, Two of Cups, Three of Cups, Four, Now we're moving into the court cards for cups, page, knight, queen, and king. And now we're in the wands suit, ace of wands, two of wands, three, four, And now the court cards, page of wands, knight, queen, and king. And now we're in the coins suit, ace of coins, two of coins, three, four, And now we're moving into the court cards, page of coins, knight, queen, and king. And that is all 78 cards. And now we're gonna take a look at the guidebook, which is again, oversized, which makes it so much easier to sit back with a cup of tea and read through for hours, unlike the smaller standard size guidebooks, which are better suited for quickly referencing card interpretations. So the table of contents lists each card in the major, major arcana, which contains the first 22 cards in the deck, but there is no, there are no individual page numbers. Only the page number for the first page of the major arcana section is listed. Similarly, under the minor arcana section, which covers the deck's remaining 56 cards and categorized into four suits, the four sections, each, the name of each suit is listed but not the page numbers where each suit begins. So to find your card, you're just looking for the interpretation of one or a few cards. You have to flip through the book to find it. But note that the suit pages are at least color coded so you can see these colors on the side of the book. Cups are blue, like water. Wands are peach. Swords are yellow and coins, which is an earth card, are green and earthy. So at the beginning of the book, there is an introduction by Carrie Ward where she talks about her background 
as a self-taught tarot reader and she explains that you don't really need magical or even psychic powers to read the tarot. She outlines the history of the tarot, debunks some popular tarot myths, and breaks down in eight simple steps how you can begin to learn reading how to read the tarot. Um, and then in the back of the book, she has a few more typical sections, like most tarot books have a section on working with the deck, which she also has. Then she has several spreads, and there's a step-by-step -step guide for doing spreads. And card spreads are just different layouts where each position of a card carries a specific purpose or meaning. And then she's got a section called The Art of Storytelling in Tarot, which has her top tips for giving readings, and then a list of tarot talismans where she's basically saying that if you wanna pick a card for the day based on how you're feeling, like if you're feeling anxious or angry, she has these categories, sadness, ashamed, overwhelmed, lost, confused. And if you're feeling any of these emotions, you might grab one of these cards and take it with you, hold it with you, put it on your altar, and, and just absorb some of the energy of that card to help you deal with how you're feeling. So let's go back earlier in the book which is going to take a look at the major arcana section so in the major arcana section <clears throat> starting with the fool and ending with the world each card gets a two-page spread which includes a full page reproduction of the card of course in color and a page of written information which includes a few key phrases representing the, representing the card uh, and about four or five or six paragraphs explaining the card's meaning, then a brief section that describes the traditional imagery you typically find on that particular card in the wider Rider Waite um, style uh, or traditional Rider Waite tarot. So she's acknowledging that a basic understanding of the standard imagery is important in understanding the tarot. So you might go ahead if you're new to tarot and get yourself a traditional Rider Waite Smith tarot deck so that you can see how the imagery she's talking about for each card relates to the symbols, etc. And many tarot deck creators use as a base for their illustrations this standard deck with their own reinterpretations that they might add. So I'll add a link in the description box to get yourself a, 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 one of the Rider Waite tarot decks. They're usually pretty inexpensive and they just come in a simple box with a very brief, simple guidebook. And you can use this as a book to help you navigate that Rider Waite tarot. And you'll notice that a lot of these illustrations in this deck are based on the traditional Rider Waite tarot. Okay, so at the end of each card interpretation, there is a good karma tip, which is a brief message. Like for the full card, the karma message is, every day is a new beginning. Another example, the Empress good karma tip is, all experience is enrichment. So now I'm going to pull a card. Oh, first I wanna just note that in the minor arcana section, you have a smaller version of the card pictured and then this single page. So there's less information. And that's, you know, the minor arcana cards, there's more of them and they carry less weight. So you get a much deeper explanation for the major arcana cards. Okay, so I'm going to pull a card and read a full interpretation. We've got the Ace of Cups. So I'm gonna look that up. Remember the Ace, the cup section is blue. So it's pretty easy to find that even though it's not, I don't usually use tables, the table of contents to look up cards anyway. I always flip through the book, but this is easy because it's color coded and the Ace is the first card in that, in every soup. So, okay. the brief explanation or description of the card is love is coming your way radiate joy compassion and happiness from within let your creative juices flow so that's just a few key phrases to um, tell us about this card 
Aces mean new beginnings, and this one is about your love life blossoming or your creative abilities unfurling. Importantly, this process all starts from within, fueled by your own self-love and belief. Expect something to begin or to rekindle that has the potential to renew your appreciation for life itself. You are overflowing with goodwill towards all. You will become what you wish to attract and the universe will respond with new opportunities. You're like a cosmic beacon and your own light is flashing brightly. You're, on the, you're in the right place time to get to meet your soulmate or for your current relationship to move on to the next level or for an important flash of inspiration to hit. You might discover a deep lasting friendship. You might be on the brink of beginning a creative project or even about to give birth. Something is coming, something good. If the Ace of Cups represents a, represents a person in your reading, they are possibly a water sign, such as a Pisces, Scorpio, or Cancer. They are that love, interest, friend, or creative partner with whom you'll find fulfillment. It could be also it could also be a nudge for you to remember that if you can't love yourself, how can others? So next is the section where we connect the traditional Rider Waite tarot imagery and meaning to this card. Traditionally, this card shows a cup representing the unconscious mind overflowing with five streams of water, representing your five senses and intuition, pouring down from the clouds, representing a growing spiritual awareness. A dove descends toward the cup, a symbol of divine love. And at the very bottom, we have the good karma tip. Become what you wish to attract. So that is the karma tip for the Ace of Cups. And one of the things I, I think is great about this interpretation is that it clearly shows different levels of meaning. You could pull the Ace of Cups, but if what if you were asking a question about work? You know, it and it, not about love. So there's the love angle, there's the person angle, and then there's the angle about creativity and, and your ideas. So it does give different perspectives um, or different topic areas where the card might have come up. So that is it. That is my review of the Good Karma Tarot. Please follow the links in the description box if you'd like to make this deck your own. And if you like this review, please share it with friends and followers. Leave a comment, hit the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. And please do check out my other videos. Thank you so much for watching Deck Obsessed. Have a beautiful day. See you next time.